We're continuing on with the Evercade cartridge reviews. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Galco Arcade Collection 1 via the Evercade VS Retro Console. Lot to be said here with this collection of games. You get six games included, and like every other Evercade cartridge, the game comes in a nice little case with a full color manual. The manual goes over the game company and you know, a little bit for each of the games that are included. With this only having six games, that's what we're getting here. There is a bit of variety with these games, and I have a lot to say about them. This review is definitely not for the children's. Holy crap. Now, this is actually one of my favorite cartridges for the Evercade, just because it's so damn weird. These are the kind of games, if you were you know, a 90s kid or even an 80s kid, like late 80s maybe. Uh, these were the kind of games that were like tossed in the back of the arcade and the the darkness where the kids who ate boogers kind of hanged out. Like these were the games you just never knew about because you didn't see them. And I don't remember ever seeing these games. This company, Galco, they're a Spanish company. Uh, they do a lot of different stuff. I think they do like dart boards now or something like that but they've made a lot of arcade games and even though that statement i just made doesn't mean that these games are horrible they're just weird these games scream 90s as fuck like whoever developed these games that's what they had in mind like it's the 90s and we're going extreme with it these are some of the most busiest games i've ever seen before the music is i don't even know how to explain it and a lot of these games it's like rock music from the 80s or 90s but that generic rock that they might have played on a sitcom intro on a like long forgotten sitcom that didn't last more than the first few episodes because it was just so horrible like the guitar riffs in these games is just it's not horrible but it's just it's not memorable it does get a bit grating because a lot of these games have a very similar soundtrack and yeah, it, it's a little annoying. Even though some of these games, I really do enjoy them. Starting off, I wanted to take a look at a, a few games. I've probably already been playing some footage from them. But Thunderhoop was the first one on the list. Where you're playing like a vaccine. A human vaccine. Like, oh man, I, I don't know what's going on here. Like there's some kind of virus and you were in a laboratory. I don't know, man. There's some, some weird crap going on. This is one of the most busiest games on here. There's another one that may be a little bit more busy than this, but this game's like extremely unfair. Now, not a single one of these games can I say they control horribly. Like the controls work fine. It's just more so the level design and how there's just so much shit popping around you. And Thunderhoop, it's just a busy mess. Like it's not an impossible game by any means, but you just have so many things just popping up out of nowhere, coming at you from all different directions. The hit detection doesn't seem horrible, but there's definitely things that really seem unfair. Like, okay, I can jump on this bitch, but if he just barely looks at me on the side of a ledge, I'm gonna die type of thing. This is probably one of my least favorite games on this collection. It's not horrible, but not memorable. In the, in the slightest, to be honest with you. Now, the next one is uh, World Rally. This is a racing game, very similar to, like, Neo Drift Out. Uh, that, those style of games where you're just over the head, like, three-quarter view, drifting around corners. Uh, the, the controls are pretty tight, but it's pretty simple. You're just holding accelerate and hitting left or right. Let go of accelerate, you know, drifting in the corners, that kind of thing. Takes a little getting used to. Not really my kind of game but it is a little addicting the more you get used to it uh turning those corners trying not to time out and whatnot so i believe you get 60 seconds to complete a track and it can be pretty challenging it, it it's it's a you know a, a decent like rally type game a, a drift type game not bad at all uh, but not great either <laughs> now the next one this one has to be my uh my favorite on this whole collection like, this game sold it for me. And that is Alligator Hunt. Now, it does have that 90s as fuck sitcom that lasted no more than the pilot episode, uh, you know, rock music playing through the whole freaking game. 
and it is annoying like the music is not good by any means like at first it's kind of like tolerable but after a while it's just like man i wish this would change up a little bit but that's just the music the game there's tons of variety here and i love this style of game it's listed as a crosshair shooter uh the only things i can compare it to is like cabal and uh uh, Blood Brothers, which is like, I love the hell out of that game. Where you're just standing there, you go left and right, you can roll out of the way of bullets and bombs and missiles, whatever's coming at you. Stand still, move your, your crosshair around and shoot, throw bombs. Like, there's stuff coming at you all different directions. There In this game, there's like ships flying through the sky, like Terminator looking craziness, different landscapes. You go in the space. It's got some of the most ridiculous spoken dialogue. Now you break down their little funny. Here at your new button. How you button me? I've ever seen, or I mean, you don't really see dialogue. Well, you do because it's written there. The text comes up, but they actually have a uh, you know voiceovers, and it's it's just redonks, man. I'm like, what's going on here? But this game was extremely enjoyable. I played the crap out of it. Just that's how much I like this game. I like this style of game. And this one with how much variety they throw at you, it's a lot of fun. I mean, playing as the the kid, you know, there's reptilian aliens coming after you, I guess, and you're playing as a, a kid on a skateboard. And then eventually that does shift into that you're in like a spaceship, like you take like take over a spaceship and fly out in the space and go to their base and all sorts of stuff. There's a lot of variety in gameplay here. It was really enjoyable for me. This this is the one, Alligator Hunt, for me. Awesome game, really dug it. The next one, which <laughs> I, I don't even know how to explain this game, it's called Glass. And I was seriously, at first, I was a little confused. It's listed as an action game, but you have to go through and you're essentially just destroying all the blocks. I guess they're glass that's covering the stage for you to move on, to keep going. And enemies will be coming at you. Like in the beginning, it's like Hell World or something like that. <laughs> you got like zombies and skeletons and shit. And then you'll fight like Satan at the end. Uh, at first, I didn't know what to think of this game, but the more I played it, I really started to enjoy it. <laughs> it's surprisingly fun, but it's also just weird as all hell. Most of these games are strange, holy crap. This one, I was I was a little confused in the beginning. I'm like, what is this boy mode and girl mode? What What is that all about? I started out playing the girl mode, and I was like, does this mean it's like easier? What What are they getting at? Like, this game did come out in like the early 90s. So I'm like, what does that signify? And I had to go back and play the boy mode to find out. No, it's not difficulty or anything like that. As you progress through the stages, there's like a silhouette in between levels. Like there's this this woman. Each time you get to a new level, it's a different woman, and she'll announce the stage and the uh, the level name or whatever. And it just it sounds it sounds ridiculous. Let's just be honest here. But every time you beat a level, the sil there's a silhouette and it starts to appear. Like there's stuff blocking it, I guess. And in the girl mode, which I don't understand, like. If you pick the girl mode, doesn't that wouldn't that mean like your your girl playing it and maybe the silhouette in the back would be like a dude or something? But no, you play the girl mode and it's a silhouette of a of a girl for each level, like and it just uncovers. You don't see anything. It's just the silhouette. That I mean, uh, unless there's more to it than that. But I went back and played the boy mode just to find out and make sure in the boy mode, you uncover like cutesy drawings instead of girls. I don't know. It's kind of freaking weird, man. But the game was fun. Like, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Now, moving on to the next one. Biomechanical Toy. Ridiculous name. Ridiculous game. This one is extremely busy, just like that first one I talked about, Thunder Hoop. This, but this one, it just felt a lot more fun to me. Then Thunder Hoop, like, there's so much going on, and it is a little difficult at times, and there's a lot of cheapness. But once you get used to the game, like, the controls are fine. Like I said earlier, like, all these games, like, the way they're programmed for the controls, they feel fine. They're functional games, but there's just some weirdness involved in some of them with the design choices as far as how the games actually play or how the enemies are coming at you. 
and biomechanical toy. You got shit coming at you every which direction. Things multiplying. You could get power-ups, uh, screen clearing, bomb type things, different guns. It, it's still fun, but a little cheap at times and kind of like overwhelming. Like there's just so many things flying at you. So many cheap deaths and whatnot, but I was just sucked in. The strange shit that, that this company has made, it, it's just so unique and different and weird that it's got a charm to it. I don't know how else to explain it, but Biomechanical Toy is probably up there. Like, my top three favorite games. Like, I'll just give it to you straight. Alligator Hunt is my top favorite. And then Biomechanical Toy and Glass maybe tie each other. It's kind of hard to say for sure which one. But moving on to the final game in the list, and that is Snowboard Championship. Snowboarding game, but essentially it's just a reskin and reverse of what the, uh, what, what was the first, the, the second game we played, World Rally. It's essentially a reversed reskinned World Rally. The controls are identical. You're just snowboarding. But there's like, it, it seems like there's less stages. I'm, I'm not sure, because I only was only able to play two. Um, but... Yeah, it, that's the way it works. Just like Neo Drift Out or that that World Rally game. You're turning corners, the arrows pop up, and you're trying to beat the time to not get disqualified or time out. Essentially the same game, just they flipped it. And they made it a dude on a snowboard instead of a rally car. That was it. One of the, like, the weaker games for me, in the sense, like it kept throwing me off with the directions because I was used to playing World Rally as I kept trying and trying and trying to play that game and get into it. So the snowboard championship with it being reversed, it kind of threw me off a little bit. It's not a bad game, but you got to be into those kind of games where it's just simple. You hold accelerate and you hit left and right to turn corners. You're not really doing anything else. Like in the arcade, I, I wonder uh, if these games had like different types of controls for those, but there you go. That's the, uh, the Galco arcade collection, a weird, 90s crazy like it's just crazy as all hell i don't know how else to explain it this collection is weird as shit there's some interesting stuff here i'm glad i have it and have been playing the crap out of it because these games with them just being just oddball weirdness screaming 90s 90s as fuck like i said it, 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 it it's almost like a parody of an arcade game collection but it's, it's so bad it's good type of thing. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I enjoyed it. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think down below. Appreciate every single one of y'all. And with that said, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.